You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. It's balance of exposure today. So we are asking, how many things do I need to expose my kids to? Yep. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about examples of exposure, types of exposure, and then the struggle. Yes. And some takeaways. That's right. So let's get started with our scoop on the coop. All right. So I wanted to just provide a little scoop on what my little guy's been up to lately. Fun. You know, we homeschool my nine-year-old, and he's along for the journey. And um, he's actually been asking to build his marble run a lot. And it's the one I gave him? Yes, the one that you handed down to us. And um, he insists that it needs to be built the way it looks on page number four of the instructions. Oh, are all the pieces there? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Because you gave me two different sets. Oh, okay. And so between the two, they're almost identical in their offering. So we can make that. But I made adjustments to it to make it better. And he likes those adjustments. But whenever it comes out from scratch, he wants what's in the instructions first. And then he likes to race the marbles. And so we're experimenting and seeing how we can get them time to, to race each other more effectively oh, cool. um, because there's usually two different tracks that the marbles go on. And he might be your fun. little engineer. Yeah, he likes that a lot. And um, But he likes to do it with you. You know, so he wants you to sit there. He wants you to race a marble and pick a color and all of that. And then he likes to cheat and win. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Think yeah. of all the learning that he's doing. Yeah. 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 So, so cool. Okay. My scoop is that this has nothing to do with homeschooling, Okay, but it's cool when your kids get to see you learn new things. Oh, yeah. So we have borrowed, the spouse and I have borrowed electric scooters and, uh, you know, motorized (laughs) scooters and seeing how I only learned to ride a bike a couple years ago. Yes. uh, We started practicing tonight because I am going to be with a friend and we're going to be using them. And I told her I was nervous about it. And she said, we'll take them home and and practice them. Oh, my goodness. I, I don't know if I can do this. Is it harder than the bike or just scarier? Oh, it's way harder than the bike. My yeah. feet, my my flat feet arches are cramping just trying to balance and stay. Now, I have no balance because I'm totally out of shape. So, you know, if you got on the scooter, you'd probably do a lot better. You should Maybe. try it. Uh, yeah. I'm in the dark. Very scared <laughs> yeah. of things like that. I don't want to get well, hurt. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's your livelihood. So. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. But um, we prayed before we went that I wouldn't break anything. And where Since did I was ride? still in the cast at this time last year. No, I wasn't. I was out of my cast. What? Yeah, only just. Yeah. Yeah. Where Where were you? Just riding? in the driveway. So it's a lot. Since our driveway, it's a decent size for a driveway, yeah. but you have to turn a whole bunch. Right. So well, that's good. That's what you really have to practice. Yeah. yeah. So I always felt like I was going to fall over. So then I put my foot down, and then you accidentally pump it a little too fast, too much, and you go way faster, and then you want to put your foot down, but no, you need to do the break. So, um, so anyway, so we'll see how you do. I mean, I was literally out of breath and my hands were sore from clenching, which also happened when I was learning to bike ride. My hands right, were right, right. Anywho, the kids were out there. They were so nervous for me Aww. and they were really excited though to see us learning. Yeah. So it, again, just showing that, showing them that, you know, I'm continually learning too, even things yeah. that I'm scared of too, right. you know, because I, there's a, a reason for it. Now, I wouldn't have tried to learn these if I didn't have a plan to use them. Right. But, and so, anyway, so that was my, my exciting thing for the night. Yeah. So let's, okay. let's go to balance of All exposure. Right. Okay. So we expose our kids to things because mm-hmm. we want to set them up for future success, right? Yeah. We want a broad spectrum of activities and learning experiences and adventures and stuff so that they can potentially find something they're super passionate right. about. And it also can make them more well-rounded in a certain interest exactly. as well. Yeah, you know? it may not be their life calling, but it could be a hobby that they are really good at or connect with the right people. Like you never know how these things weave into their lives. And so... Yeah, I love that with yeah. the hobby. I mean, just right. to have a hobby even yeah. as an adult is... It's actually rare these right. days. It you know? is. And you meet people and they're like, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I could crochet, but they've never tried. They've never been exposed, you know, to the opportunity to sit down and try it. So I can appreciate, you know, how big or small you could be looking at opportunities, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so let's start off with some examples. Yes. So I'll go first. Um, 
So my son, when he was about to turn two, my daughter was about to be born. My sister bought him Thomas the Train Tracks. I didn't know anything about them, right. but she had had sons, so she knew. So she, she knew. got him just a circle tracks and he fell in love with them. Like he loved it. And then over time it grew and grew. And at first we thought we needed to glue the tracks down because it was so frustrating for him when they would get messed up. Yes. Not realizing that was part of the process. That was part right. of the learning, you know, and, um, or the train would come off it and he would, you know, I'm like, I can't handle this. And by this time I have a baby. And, right. But now he's 10 and we have like six to eight bins of just yes. these wooden train tracks and the signals and stations that go with it and the bridges and everything. So that little exposure right. really catapulted him into something that he loves and has really raised his quality of life. And yeah. so we you know we go to train museums. Every time we hear a train or see a train, we say train, even if he's not there. Like, right. you know, because it's such a habit. We ride trains whenever we can, you know, to the children's museum. Yeah. We purposely park somewhere else so we can ride the train in. Right. You know, uh, even as hard as it was when I had a stroller and all that, you know. So um, so that's one example. I have another example. We have a friend of ours, um, and she's like six or seven, and she's someone made slime with her one time and she became obsessed with yes. slime. So she makes slime all the time mm -hmm. and she has all different renditions of it. But that has now turned into her, she wants to do a craft club. Oh, fun. So yeah. uh, once a month, her mom is letting her host a craft club That's for cute. my daughter to come to. Right. So I couldn't come this month, which was one of the, <sighs> you know, right. first, time, first times we would have been going. But, um, but anyways, so I thought that was like such a neat interest and who knows maybe it's the chemistry maybe it's the texture the yeah. sensory input or whatever right. but who knows what that will then lead her to Absolutely. you know for this for this child um i have more i could say but do you have any that come oh, to yeah. mind um i mean when it comes to hobbies you know like just even having um enough free time for my daughter to figure out that she likes to make like little stories yeah you know and so that's kind of one of those things you don't think about giving to your child but now it's become a thing and so now I go out of my way to make sure she's got lots of notebooks and you know paper that she likes or pens and materials to use because she likes to tell stories in different ways in different mediums you know sometimes it's comic book style sometimes I mean she when I left to come here she was working on a new um What's she called? A storybook. And there was a melon elephant. Oh. And there was a bacon bird. Oh, fun. Yeah. She was creating, I can't even think of what she called it, but it was just so creative and mm -hmm. fun. And she had done that in the 15 minutes it took me to put my son to bed. Yeah. You know, and well, so it's big, it's big for her. It's a hobby. And she, and that turns now. into storytelling through right. iMovie as well. Right. right? Yeah. And doing that. And then that's her play with her friends, too, right. or with some of them who are right. interested in that. And so that's not a great example of exposure, but it is something that I intentionally set aside time for and invest in in those little ways. Well, and teaching her. her to read. Sure. I yeah. mean, everybody gets to have that exposure, hopefully, right. you know, yeah. but just, I, I mean, I listed that here. My daughter learning to read is, 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 a, is a skill she learned that has opened so many more exactly. interests for her. Yeah. And so then, you know, you have the, the music classes. Those are things I definitely intentionally took her to, to expose her to and, um, um, farm school. Yeah. So I knew she had a, a love for animals. She, we used to joke that she connected more with animals than she did people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I wanted her to have the experience to see what it was like to actually be working with animals and mm -hmm. not just to always look at cute animals. And so she um, did farm school once a week for a half day for two years or so from age three and a half or four to um, six. Mm -hmm. And it was super fun for her and she loved it. And she's convinced now that she's going to be a veterinarian and that's carried over since she was, once she knew that that was an actual career opportunity you know it's something that she she has clung to and so yeah. I don't know if she's gonna do that you know and so um it's just something now that we have in mind and you know we talk about what it would take to to become a veterinarian and she's pretty set on it yeah and and when they develop these interests the skills that they're developing for that not even just we were talking about grit right yeah they having the long-term goals and mm -hmm. And so if they're developing those skills in that, even if they switch to something else, right. that development has happened inside yeah. them and that they can apply it to the next passion yeah, exactly. or interest. Um, 
So my son, I have to say, he's super into baseball. Yes. And we forced him to do his first season of baseball when he was three because um, he had a lot of fear. And so right. my aunt, who's a, develop a child development psychologist, said, um, you know, challenge him physically and grow him physically and that will give him emotional strength if he has physical yeah. strength. So we put him in gymnastics and we also did baseball. And, and it ends up being he was so passionate about baseball that he announces his games. He, right. you know, pays attention to stacks. I mean, I talked about this yeah. so much because it is such a big passion. Yeah. And so, and now we're kind of trying to transition that also into golf so right. that, um, and it's very similar, mm -hmm. um, so that it's something that is easy to participate in without needing a team, sure. you know? So, um, but yeah, it's, um, you never know these little things that they're exposed to, what it could grow from. And there's a ton of things we've exposed our kids to. Yes. That hasn't gone anywhere. Exactly. So, um, and those examples might come up along the way. So, well, actually, I'll, I'll give one of those. Sure. So, my kids were in horseback riding for, you know, a year or whatever, a school year. And they did a show and everything. And then two or three years later, I had them do a one-er lesson with a different teacher. Now I didn't research the teacher. I didn't make sure she had a, a really good structure and schedule or right. anything like that. It's just, she was down the street. Sure. Right. And they didn't like it. They don't care to get, go anymore. I mean, one said, well, if it's free, yeah, but I wouldn't want you to spend your money on it. So <laughs> they're old enough now to know the value. Yeah. Of things, like so if like, that money's going to go there, where is it not going right. to go? Right. They also know that when we pay for things that we expect them to go. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. So, but I just tested it, tested it yeah. out with one and it didn't work, you know, right. and you know, who's to say if I tested it out somewhere else, but they weren't like, let's try a new teacher. It was, no. I'm not uh, even interested no. in horses. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so that, that's one example of the many times that we've tried things, whether, sure. you know, she's done. You know, my daughter's done dance one season of jazz and then didn't right. care to go back. And yeah. that's fine. She got a jazz moment, you know. Exactly. Um, I just want to find their passion, help them find their passion. Exactly. You know? Okay, so let's talk about types of exposure. So we have exposure in the home and exposure outside the home. Let's okay. talk about exposure in the home. Okay. So, um, you know, YouTube's like how-tos, mm -hmm. you know, seeing if they thrive on learning how to do art or whatever. There's... The kits, the subscription kits, you know, that my kids love and music and stories, mm -hmm. whether it's read aloud or audio or books, there's, there's movies where they're exposed to an idea or right. a, or a, a hobby or even documentaries when they're right. exposed they to see seeing. the veterinarians at work. And yeah, definitely. You know, and so, um, and you know, there's even video games if they're interested in computers, you wouldn't know some, some kids, believe it or not, aren't really that interested in video games. And, um, but those who are, but are truly, truly into them, right. then like you can take a step further by getting them a coding class right? and then see if they like a one, like a one or a one or coding class from right. outschool.com or something. Right. right. And then if they really like that, then you can move on. Right. Or I did the subscription box. Yeah. But. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of workshop style classes. Yeah. You know, it's two hours for one day and it exposes them to a lot of different things rather than a class that you're committing to. And it starts slow and may not really expose them to the heart of what this activity could be. Right. Yeah. And it might, and it might even squelch their excitement yeah. for it. You know, if it's, if it's meant for an older kid or, right. a, a, or a different developmental level. Right. So the workshops, the one day opportunities are pretty great for those. Yeah. And then um, chores around the house and helping around with house projects. Because right. we have a friend who's totally into his um, groundskeeping. Yes. And he's what, nine? Right. He's got his own business. Lawn mowing business. Yeah. And, and he yeah. has his, weed, his three weed whackers. And I've actually mentioned him before because yeah. I'm so... I'm so um, happy when I find kids who have found their passion. Right. And, you know, his shirt's made up with his logo on it. And right. He has a hat with his logo. and But he was helping his dad right. doing the wee whacking. Right. And his passion may not actually be right. gardening and lawn care. It could be entrepreneurial. Right. And so he has a passion for 
for working hard, for getting himself out there and trying something. You know, yeah. so he may be that kind of person who starts several businesses in the future. Yeah, he, or he, it may be gardens and yeah, greens. he could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Who knows? He could you know? be a potential landscaper. You know, it's totally. You well, I know? asked him what he liked about it. Yeah, because I was like, I would you want to come and. I was like, I really need like all these weeds pulled. And he's like, oh yeah, no, I, I don't pull weeds. I just like to work the machines. Yeah. So so then that could totally help help guide him too into another avenue of right. machinery or whatever. Yeah. And it could be that he likes making money too, you know? Exactly. Like who doesn't like doing that? It's not bad. I mean, but you that, learn to work hard. Yeah. And that all stemmed from helping with chore or yeah. a project. You know, yeah. my husband had my son help him, you know, change the toilets, you know, and not that changing a toilet would be, but, but actually, he found his calling. Yeah. He found his yeah. But, but seeing like a before and after, right. maybe, you know, things like that, even exposing them to, um, like a fixer upper show, yeah, you know, sure. type of thing. So those are ways we can expose our kids in the home in a very mm-hmm. easy way with not big commitment. Right. And then you have the outside the home. Yeah. So you um, are part of an organization yes. or organizations. Right. Yes. So I, as you know, teach dance. Um, I was part of a um, homeschool arts program. I collaborated with other arts educators and we had a half day program for homeschool students to come to. Um, I've run dance camps, all kinds of opportunities, workshops, um, you know, I've done the whole street fair, come dance with us, you know, or gone to the children's um, museums and collaborated with yeah, them. Yeah, I ran into you there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I d- I've done a lot of those, and obviously those are the types of extracurriculars that um, I gravitate towards because that's what I know. Yeah. yeah, and here's the thing, too. It's like I put my son in the dance camps in the right. summer. He didn't show an interest in continuing, but he still got a really good skill and really yes. good experience out of it and it improved his quality of life in being able to understand the nutcracker a little bit more exactly. and being able to just appreciate another genre of whatever right and so that's what I also like about exposure is it it it, it just clues you in a little bit so you can appreciate yeah. those things more like painting the Monet by the lily, lily pads you know right. that we did a while ago um but dealing with oil paints and that you don't yeah. use water to rinse them off, you know, right. then when you see an oil painting, even if you never paint with oil paint again, you have an understanding of right. what that was like, yeah. you know? Yeah. It helps you really understand the world around you. Yeah. And so, um, exposure outside the home can be what you were talking about, yeah. you know, places where you drop them off They're yeah. the outsourced exposure right. and you can commit for a month, but you have to make sure when you're committing, right. That are not committing that you're not, not that you're, you're not not committing at right. a time where they need commitment. Right. Yeah, because here's the thing. While I love all kids to come and try it and know that dance isn't going to be for every child mm-hmm. long term, I don't teach that way. Right. I teach with long term goals in mind for my students. Every class should bring value immediately to my students, mm-hmm. but I'm also on a on a path. You know, I have them on a trajectory to go forward. And so what often happens is kids who do certain activities seasonally don't mm-hmm. realize that we are continuing are continuing ongoing right you know so I I think I even explained to you at some point that dance we do it in school years it never yeah. stops yeah. you know so it keeps going whether you're taking a season on or off it's right. not the same as sports and certain activities right. you know and that's neither good nor bad right right it's, it's just, just different. a different kind and yeah so for like a sport, we make sure we don't miss the first day. Right. So the first day they get some foundational yep. information and rules. Um, and then, so if someone were to f- miss the first couple of practices and showed up halfway through, like, who is this kid? Right. You're, you're not really part of the team. No. So it's, it's just a similar idea, but just on right. a micro scale. Right. Exactly. And, um, and so you have to remember that when you are just plugging them in somewhere, there's a there's a course to it, you know. Right. There's a a course of study. There's right. You need to find out does this activity require some prerequisites, you know? Right. Are there things that you need to know in advance? 
Are they going to feel behind when they go in there? Or is it not meant for a short-term commitment? So is there a different way to expose them to something before you need to make a commitment or have them make a commitment? And that's why I love camps. Exactly. So ukulele, for example, our daughters did ukulele yeah. for a camp. And that wasn't really giving them uh, the technique, right? Yeah. It was just getting them to bust out some songs right. in a they learned and a few enjoy chords. an yeah. instrument. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were talking about. Still doing ukulele camp this summer, even though our kids have had lessons because they enjoy it. It's they had so experience. much fun and yeah. it's a different experience. And, um, and you want your kids to enjoy musical instruments, exactly. not just learn them, but right. You know, have fun with them. So and see all the different things there are to do with them. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you are in the midst of lessons, you lose sight of performing. You lose sight of the other fun things, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, those are just, you know, art class and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, horseback riding, as I yeah. already mentioned, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. And then there's exposure <clears throat> outside the home with you. Yes. Whether you're taking them on nature hikes mm -hmm. or to the beach or, um, museums. camping, museums, mm -hmm. road trips, that's all exposure. And I know my son, we, I took him, I took him to the art museum in Balboa Park when we were doing Claude Monet to see the Impressionist right. room, which was closed. But so we walked around the rest and did right. find some impressionist paintings, but we, we came across this Egyptian statue from BC or whatever. And, um, and he stared at it for such a long time. And then when I asked him in the whole day, what did you like seeing the most? It was that statue it had nothing to do with what we were studying. Yeah. And then just the other day, I'd forgotten all about it. Just the other day, he was like, I want to watch YouTubes about, um, that old stuff, like Egypt and stuff. And I was like, oh, and he's like, like the thing that wow. was at the museum. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my goodness. So he likes artifacts, old right. artifacts. Right. So that, that was pretty cool. And that all came about because I was exposing them to something totally different, yeah. still in the art world, but, sure. yeah. but something, a totally different genre of art. Mm -hmm. And this, this came up. So you just never know. And, and we just need to pay attention exactly when we're with them. Yeah, to find out, you know, after an outsource one, you can say, "Oh, what did you like about the day?" But there's certain nuances you miss, yeah. you know, by you not there. being there. Right. But when you are there, like utilize right. that. Yeah, because yeah. even as a dance teacher, unless I literally tell the parents, "Oh, well, we discussed these social emotional learning opportunities," right. and you know, we did these developmental skills, cognitive and physical. You don't know that I pumped all that into them. No idea. All they know is that they did a butterfly game and they got to, I don't know, hop over dots. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, you were, I, I know when we showed up, it was just because our friends were already going right. to you. And then I was like, oh, she's super cute and she's smiley and full of energy. And right. they get to wear butterfly or uh, fairy wings right. and balance teddy bears on their head. Sounds great. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> We're Glad gonna make stay good, in this as long yeah. as possible. And these are gonna be my friends. Yeah. yeah, these are and gonna be my friends. Yeah. Look what happened. I know. Here we are. Um, the coop was born. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Um, so let's talk about the struggle because the struggle that's really is, where it's at, and it's real. And I mean, are you okay if I go first? You go first because obviously. My life would be so easy if my children just wanted to dance and that was their life. passion because yeah. then I didn't have to worry about my time and mm -hmm. how to split things up. And so I often sit there and wonder because right now my daughter does like dancing and I've always told her that is not something that she has to continue. You know, even if it's fun for the two of us to have that together, we can have something else together. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be dance. Um, but she seems to like it. She keeps mm -hmm. coming back, and whether yeah. it's for her friends or for our bond, between, you know, with it, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna keep yeah. encouraging she's it. She's still young. Yeah, yeah, she's nine. I'm gonna keep encouraging it. Um, but it's sometimes at the detriment of saying no to other things. Right. I'm not gonna go do lacrosse for six weeks because <laughs> we already are committed to our things and we have other things on the horizon. It's not just that hour block right. in our schedule. It's okay. Well, we have costumes for recital coming up and we have these things. Well, on and if you're the busy, like someone else yeah. said the same thing, they already are set for sports because they're busy other days of the week. Right. They needed a day where they weren't. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, um, 
And then we've talked about this before too. For both of us, music is non-negotiable. Right. So then I have something that I'm saying, oh no, you have to keep being exposed to this thing. Hopefully you like it. Right. But if not, you know, but for now, least, that's what we're doing. At least with your work right. that coincides with all this is, is something that's good for your children right. and not like... Oh, I make lanyards for a living, you know, exactly. and, and you need to sit here in the office with me. It's like, right. oh no, you actually get to, right. this is something we share right. and it's something that I want for you in your life. Exactly. And we so. talk a lot about that in episode 31, the mm -hmm. music and movement, because it's there and I'm taking a class and I just had to read a whole paper and write a reflective article or a paper on the brain and how dance is so beneficial to the brain. So I definitely don't mind right. exposing my kids to that and kind of keeping that something that they're doing. So I don't feel like I would regret that choice. Mm -hmm. However, what am I not letting her try? That mm -hmm. could be something she might really find a passion in or, I mean, she's too young to meet life-changing people at yeah. this point, but you never know, yeah. right? Like yeah. you just think about yeah. all these things. And so the, the struggle is real all the time. And so I'm always checking in, you know, seasonally checking in to see if that's what she likes. Is there something else that you want to do? And, but at the same time, they don't know. I know. They don't well, have a list sitting in front of them saying, Oh, well, I might want to try this. You know, it's you, exposing them is how they get the idea that they might want to try something. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard too, because my husband and I were just talking about this yeah. since I specialized in swimming by the time I was eight. So before <laughs> I was eight, um, my, my mom was awesome. She put me in tennis, bowling, we, I tried volleyball. Tap dancing. Um, I, ballet. Ballet. I ballet. I did ballet, <laughs> I did ballet with a yes. broken arm. Yes. Um, I did a whole bunch of things, just like small committal things. And then, but gymnastics since I was three. Mm -hmm. And then at eight years old, I was totally doing swimming on the days I wasn't doing gymnastics. Okay. And so it was like two and three or three and two. And so then she was tired of driving me around because my sister now was five days a week or six days a week swimming. And she's right. like, you have to choose, but we're all going to be at swim meets on weekends. And you know, so I'd be dropping you off at gymnastics or whatever. So I was like, Oh, I want to do swimming. My sister was doing swimming. Right. I had developed friends doing swimming. Sure. So, but we, I still had to choose, you know, right. and my mom was so thankful for that. And she probably guided me that way because she said gymnastics. I still hadn't ever been in a gymnastics meet, you know, and I was eight and, um, it was super expensive. And so, um, and swimming, everybody gets to swim, right? No matter how fast you are, you compete against yourself. It's, it, you're not competing against the people on your team, right? To get a spot to be able to even be on right. the meet, you right. know? So, I mean, you're so, so anyways, so, um, so anyways, I go to say that is I specialized at eight. So here I have a 10 year old, a nine year old and a six year old who aren't specialized at anything. I mean, my son was almost specializing in baseball till that, that went away. But, um, so my husband and I were talking about this and he said, well, the problem with specializing so young is that the injuries are really high. Oh yeah. And, um, who knows what else they'd be good at. Right. You know, so. I'm like, yeah, but that's a struggle. In order to, to play the sport in college, if that's what they want to do, if you are super competitive and you're super into your sport, right. that's where you want to go. That's your goal. You have to specialize. And, yeah. and if, if you didn't specialize when you're younger, then you, that opportunity is not going to be available to you unless you're highly gifted. Right. You know, so, and unless your parents have so much money that they can get you the best, you know, mentorship and, and private lessons that they can. Right. So, um, so anyway, so that's the struggle, you know, and the, the society has made it where you have to specialize young. So we are saying as parents already, I guess they won't, you know, right. I guess they'll, they'll hopefully find something they love at, at right. some point and see that as the end in, in itself. Right. The exactly. end is finding things that you love, right? right? Okay. So that's part of the struggle too. Like when, when do they need to get really special about something because like for dance if you go in if you start dance at 10 you've lost like however many years like there's probably no catching up I'm oh, guessing there's... yeah uh, it's not the same it's okay. not one for one um because dance is a very large realm so you're talking if you're talking about getting into an elite dance company 
Maybe, but even still, Misty Copeland, one of the yeah. most famous dancers of our time, she didn't start dancing until she was 13. Okay. okay. See, so. so I'm always encouraged by that right. because I know a friend of mine said she um, she didn't start her daughter and she was a pro volleyball player. Exactly. She didn't start her until she was 13. Yeah. So then I was like, okay, there's still more time, but certain sports, there may be less. Yeah. I think that's just a matter of dance being that person's calling or ballet being Misty Copeland's calling and she just didn't find it until 13. Right. And so it's different than forcing a calling upon somebody saying, right. oh no, I think you need to be a swimmer. Sorry, I don't mean yeah, to yeah, be, no, no, it's yeah. not meant at you. Yeah. You know, you're going to be a soccer player. Yeah. And so I'm going to have you in soccer lessons at three. You right. can't always force it. So right. there's some, some amount of, it just happens to be the right thing at the right time. Yeah. That kind of fits, you know? And I mean, my niece, um, she's 14, almost 15. And she's looking to possibly move to London to dance at the Royal Ballet as an, a, a trainee. Hmm. And so she'd be basically at a boarding school is what hmm. it would be because they can offer better opportunities and oh. better physical training, um, well-rounded training. Because like you said, dancers have high rates of repetitive use injuries. Oh, right. Because you're training the same thing. So a lot of these newer dance programs or these ones that have lots of money are able to hire dan um, trainers to come in and really take care of them. So then you're talking about sending your 15 year old across yeah. the pond. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're, you're losing them, right? You're losing them at 15. I mean, right. Yeah, my friend just did that with um, her son who plays hockey. She says we were we were hoping to, that he'd go off and do this in three years, but no, he's fifteen, right? And he got accepted to some league in like Canada, so he's moving because there. there's reasons it makes sense, and it may not make sense to people on the outside or even some people on the inside. Mm -hmm. Because I love my niece, and it would be devastating to have her or to think about her leaving. However. This is her dream. Yeah. And Royal Ballet for a ballerina is the dream of right. all dreams. Yeah. I that's mean, where that's, everyone wants to go. That's the, that's just thought, that's part of the struggle, you know? And um, so once you expose them and it takes off, how do you limit it? Do you right. let it right. become your life, yeah. you know? And so that's all part of the struggle. And, um, and, and how, like you were saying, how much did it expose them to? So one of the things I do love is we have since, since my son actually loves almost every competitive sport, yeah. it seems like. So so I-9's been great for him, which is right. this league that's like six or seven weeks, not big yeah. commitment. And we could continue to do the same sport over and over again. And right. we've noticed some people do do that. And they're way better. And their teams sure. are way better. They obviously hook up the same teams. And um, so he could keep doing that. But he actually has enjoyed trying, you know, soccer yes, and so cool. flag football. And so he's actually enjoying the TV sports right. a lot more too. Right. So hopefully with all that and the well-roundedness, he'll find eventually yeah. one thing to really focus on. Yeah. And then we'll hopefully have savings to dive in and get him real lessons, you yeah. know, and, and, and technique. And he just may be that kind of guy who loves all the sports. But mm -hmm. here's the thing that you're gifting him by exposing him is that he can go join a soccer game that is spontaneous. You yeah, know, he can right. go play volleyball with his friends. He's not saying no because he's not comfortable doing it. Right. So right. even if it's not a, a a profession or even a college sport, that's okay too because look at the benefits of he that. He can just is. enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm not sure that my daughter would say yes to a casual soccer game when she's yeah. twenty because she's not learned to do much. Yet. Yes. I'm yeah. hoping that we do that because I like the idea of I-9 that's maybe not on the weekends. Right. I think if they did it for homeschool hours during oh, yeah. the daytime. Well, we can buy be, a franchise. Yeah, They're always selling franchises. Oh, we can buy geez. a franchise. Mar yeah. Mar Mar the spouse and I were figuring this out on Saturday. We're like, we paid this hmm. much. There's about 200 kids here and it's only one day a week. Like right. how much is how much right. money are they actually making? And how many homeschool moms would actually also? I mean, there's you have your weekend people who yeah. like their weekend days because that protects their week right weekdays right. And then there's people who are like, mm, no I more like on Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. yeah, I like ha I like having. And I want it during the Saturdays. daytime, but you like having Marcus there. Oh and yeah, I'm I sure my too. husband would like to be there. But for something that's six weeks in duration, I don't. I feel like that's more like a PE class. Yeah, well, I've missed I've missed yeah. a number already. That's how you rotate through sports in, in, in traditional PE. schools. Yeah, and so I want to 
think of it as PE and make it a part of our totally. curriculum. Yeah, it's more just I like an that. educational yeah. Yeah, it's on my aspect. List. Well, she's getting a lot through um, dance. So, <laughs> yeah. so you know, it's just, it, it's all, it's this. It's right. exactly how, how we're talking. This is a very real conversation. Yeah. And we've had this one. So many times. Dozens of times in our I know. Yeah. And yeah. Every time new opportunities come up, we discuss all this stuff like, oh, oh. they'd like it, but I don't know. No, and yeah. then I want to be home yeah. on this day. I know. Yeah. Exactly. The and then, yeah, with homeschool arts versus their enrichment academy, right. we were like, wait, that's two days in a row. Right. I didn't even schedule anything new on Thursday mornings. Uh, when our homeschool arts was happening because yeah. I preserved it to hold it during this COVID year that we're not teaching it. Right. Yeah. I'm hoping they go back next year. I'm hoping we go back next year. I know. Year, I'm hoping my little one goes back I, next I year know. too. That'd be her first She's year. She's been dying to go to some kind of school. Poor baby. <laughs> and then they keep getting, the first one right. was canceled and then COVID hit and then, so that one was canceled. Right. She wants her group class opportunity. And yeah, yeah. It's never happened. Yeah. Yeah. Poor thing. All right. So here's some gauges. Yes. For the struggle. So I just thought of these. Anyone could think of these, but we're, uh, I'm just going to list them this out. This Mandy's gauge. These are my gauges. Can you have family dinner at least a few times a week? Yeah. If you can, then you're probably not overexposing your child to things. You it know, depends on your personal value system. Yeah. Right. If you're able to be a family a certain number of times a week and have be present and have that time and not be yeah. rushing eating all the time. How about time for friends? Do you yeah. have time for friends? Do you have a... Are you able to go out once every two weeks even? Right. You know, we're able to get together once a week to do yes. this, right? Yes. And and hopefully some other times too. And then I'm able to go see a friend or two throughout yeah. the week as well. Um, but also your kids, do they have time to see friends outside right. of like the community of their sports or their right. whatever? Um, also, is there time for free play? So that's another gauge. Is there a space in your day that they can just... Hang, play with their Legos, do right. whatever. Choose their own activity. Make decisions, yeah. yeah. Um, and then are there time, is there time for others to pursue interests? So here's, oh, yes. here's something like one kid gets to do all this stuff and then the others have to revolve around it. Yeah. Right? Just your story about you, your sister, and then you, you know, I didn't. I didn't always realize that part of your decision making was out of convenience too. Right. Yeah. It, you wanted I mean, to be where your family was. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know. And and here's the thing. It's like um, if you choose differently, then if the nights are conflicting, which one is the parent at? And if one's driving, then then that one's out right. of luck. You know. Right. You have to find someone to take them or whatever. Right. So all that. Um, if if you're focusing too much on one person's passions or one person's gifts. Are the other kids left out in the cold? And yeah. and because they need stuff right. too. Forced to pursue that or Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. what we did was like my son really wanted to do flag football. That was on Saturdays. We knew that was gonna be an hour drive to go. And so we looked at the other sports girls, you interested in these other sports? Because this is where we're gonna be. Right. And they said, Okay, we'll do lacrosse. Yeah, so cute. So awesome. So th right. they're occupied during it as well. Um, okay, and then um Another gauge is, are you in the car more than you are at home? Because, I mean, we all live in the car, but for a certain, you know, to go places, to right. go to, you know, SeaWorld or Disneyland. But there's or too much. Family. Yeah. But there's too much, right? So do you have enough home time where home is at home and not in the car? Right. And then um, is, your, is your house stressful? Are you constantly trying to get out the door and yelling at your kids to get out the door or, or disciplining them because they're not able to get out the door when you need to or yeah. eat fast enough to be able to leave. So what's the stress level like in your home? And so um, so with COVID hopefully ending here soon with all the um, medical advances, if you want to call it that sure. happening, right? Yeah. Um, everyone's saying, I'm actually kind of like sad that this is ending and that right. now I'm, I'm going to be signing up for gymnastics three days right. a week. Now I'm going to be doing this and that and that. Right. And so, and they're actually sad, but they feel this need to expose right. their kid. But do you have to? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so those are some gauges. Yeah. I like those. Yeah. Thanks. So I have some takeaways too. Okay. Besides the gauges. Yes. When signing up for something, maybe first just expose them slightly to see yeah, if they like exactly. it. Exactly. The one workshop, the one day, the mm -hmm. camps. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, another takeaway is research, research the experience or the workshop and make sure it represents their in the interest well. Right. 
So like I mentioned, the horseback riding, they had a great experience the first time. Right. Um, the second time, she, I, you could tell she had never even taught horseback riding before. So it wasn't a good, good experience. Right. You know, um, so research it well or get, get, um, use a vendor that someone has recommended that right. was a really great experience. Um, another takeaway is balance the exposure experiences with familiar. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing all exposure, a whole bunch of new stuff all the time, none of it may actually jive with your child because it's right. too much. Right. So, I mean, even just something as simple as like, you're exposing them to fantasy literature. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna dive right into Lord of the Rings? Or are you gonna start with maybe like, um, Align the Witch in the Wardrobe, right. one you know, right. one book that doesn't have to continue to, to right. hear how it ends, you know, you can. Right. But, you know, so use that as like a guide, like, is this the Lord of the Rings or is this just Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe? Right. You know, or are you teaching them, you know, how to sit right at tea time, how to um, keep their elbows. If, 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 is it too many manners at once? Right. For example. It's overwhelming. Yeah, it's yeah. too much. Like just one thing. And then um, provide a sensory rich environment in the home. Yes. So if they're little, you know, you have the bins, you have the water beads, the finger paints, the instruments, the puppets, right. and see what they go to. And that's their exposure. That's enough exposure when they're little yep. to see what they, they flock to. And then when they're older, then you can start looking at the YouTubes and the workshops and things like that. And then pay attention to what games your child gravitates towards. Mm -hmm. So some want cooperative games, some love yes. the competitive game. Yes. If you have someone who loves competitive games, they might like competitive sports. Right. If your kid likes the games that are more literature based and they might like more right. storytelling experiences. So right. those are those are my takeaways. Love it. Yeah. So that's it. That's the yes. balance of exposure. It's still a constant struggle. There's no for right me. answer. Yeah, there's, there's no, no right answer. Yeah. It's just that's that, the challenge. Yeah. 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 It's just your priorities, like you were mentioning. Yeah. What is your priority? Yeah. And just stick to that. And that goes back to your homeschool mission, right. too. And yes. And then, just like we've said with that, same thing is check in. Yeah. you got to check in frequently because things change. Your kids change. You change. You know, people get busy, not even because they're doing more activities, but because life gets busy sometimes, right. you know? And so... Um, you just got to check in and see what's working and not working. And sometimes your kids don't know what they don't know. Right. You know, they right. don't know what they're missing. And so it's our role to help them with that. And they might just be content. And that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you, even if you see them not getting the exercise they need right. or something, then you can try to figure out, well, which... Which exercise works for them? Right. But they have to do right. one. So which one? Right. Which one physical work? activity is an essential part of being a healthy person. Right. So in what way would you like to achieve that? Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's go to our joys. All right. Um, oh, I just submitted the last work for my class. That's awesome. Uh, it was a six week class and it was on choreography and it was a lot because I had, so you'd think I don't mind recording myself because we're here. Hello. But me having to present my own work by myself and record myself is so not my thing. I do this with you because I love you oh. and I'm passionate about what we're talking about and it feels comfortable. But, and it's, I've been choreographing my whole adult yeah, life. Yeah, So totally. you would think it's not a thing, but it, it's one of those areas I get super self-conscious. It's always been a barrier for me. Couldn't audition for things. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Two yeah. inside my head. I yeah. don't want to be judged. Mm -hmm. And so taking a choreography class where it's not just a performance for other people to enjoy, it's for critique and critical analysis. Yeah, no. Nope, no thanks. Well, so it's been a long few weeks. Yeah. That's awesome that you're done. But I'm just totally relating to you. I'm feeling my anxiety because when I was doing my counseling degree, I couldn't film the child, but oh, I geez. had to film myself counseling the child. And then they show it. Oh, no. And everybody in the room gets to study me and say what I was doing oh, right and wrong. A and, nightmare. You know, Done yeah. in a psychologist way, but right. But still, yep. you know it's a critique. Yeah, you know? my videos are posted for the whole class for peer review. Yeah, yeah. That's but crazy. I don't have to be there while it's but being still, shown. But still, still, that that's yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and it's your create creative juices too. Right. So, yeah. It's so that's very a little extra subjective. level. Yeah. 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 So well, congrats. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I just got this new devotional. I'm, I'm holding it up. My, what brought me joy is my church gave this to us. It's oh. the one year praying through the Bible for your kids by Nancy Guthrie. Oh, yeah. So um, at church, they had it in a box, and it had a sticker with our last name printed on the sticker. <laughs> but it was, Cute. and and so, yeah, there um, it's a page per day. That's and um, there are stories with a prayer, and so I'm excited to do that. She's sure, got, and I love that. Our director of the children's um, K th- or toddler through fifth grade, she said, I just thought it would be, be neat if all the families had the opportunity to be reading the same devotion every day. That's really cool. Yeah. So, um, so that brought me joy that our church would even do something like that. That's yeah. Really sweet. Yeah. You know, they're not requiring it or anything. No, but, no, no, you know. no, no. But it's it's yeah. out there for us. So, yeah. yeah. So that's it. That was uh, Balance of Exposure. Mm-hmm.